Hey there, welcome back to the Speak Your Peace YouTube channel. My name is Ian McNaughton. Uh, this is going to be one of 10 F1 season in reviews that I'm doing for the SYP YouTube channel. Uh, we're going to be discussing recaps, uh, notes from each team this season, uh, some best moments and worst moments, and then we're going to talk about storylines heading into 2022. Uh, I believe I'm, uh, my schedule looks like I'm going to have videos up every day until about Thursday, and then we'll have the final videos like for Mercedes and Red Bull uh, early next week. Uh, we also got a couple podcasts that we're doing this week as well, so be on the lookout for that. That should be really fun. Um, basically, yeah, it, it, it's just me talking about Formula One uh, to myself. Hopefully people will watch. We'll see. I don't know. Uh, I, I don't. I haven't done any sort of... Uh, kind of on my own YouTube vids for a while. I've been doing uh, some of my own articles, which has been good. Uh, go take a look at that. You can go read those articles at speakyourpeace.ca. Uh, good stuff. But I haven't done some of my own uh, YouTube videos in a while. And since it's kind of Christmas holidays and I'm off school for a bit, I figure now is a good opportunity to do so. Uh, let's start with Haas. This is going to be the Haas season review or the Haas. I don't know. I like Haas more. Haas sounds kind of badass. Um, they were last place in the constructor standings this year. They had zero points. Uh, they did not develop their 2021 car. They made their car for 2021, but did not upgrade it or improve on it at all this season. Instead, using their limited resources to focus on the 2022 car, where there's new regulations, uh, where there's going to be a bit more, um, how do I say this? competitive balance which is like parody but it's yeah it, it, it's it, it's more with you know covid um and the pandemic still impacting f1 more than maybe some teams who would let you believe uh haas has definitely been a team that's been impacted by covid and especially financially they've been impacted so that's why they've opted to focus more on 2022 getting the 2022 car ready instead of worrying about 2021 when they're not going to be that competitive when they're not going to be that good this year uh and it showed in the standings like they they didn't get any points this year um nikita mazepin did get a fastest lap if that meant anything which was the wet race in belgium um this was the worst finish in a six-year history of haas f1 uh, it also kind of coincides with an underwhelming season in the NASCAR Cup Series for the Stuart Haas racing team. Eric Almirola got the only victory for Stuart Haas in 2021. And not to say that the um, Haas F1 team is equal to the Stuart Haas uh, Cup team in NASCAR. They, they are completely different. Stuart Haas is a much more competitive team compared to Haas F1 but it's still kind of interesting how each team is being impacted uh, with their uh, racetrack product compared to maybe some, um, you know, they're, they're one of their best, some of their best moments this year. I, I have Mick Schumacher being competitive in Hungary. Uh, he got 12th place there. And that's partially because of all the people who were taken out in the first lap in Hungary uh, he was fighting with uh, less so Lewis Hamilton, but more so Max Verstappen. That was one of my favorite Haas moments of the year, especially Mick Schumacher moments uh, going uh, down the front straight, turn one, battle, battling with Max. And Max's car was not totally um, 100%. He had, I believe, floor damage and some wing damage. Uh, he also, um, how do I say this? He was also racing in Hungary, which Hungary is not the mo not the easiest uh, track to pass or get around people. You really have uh, the DRS in turn one in Hungary. Uh, some people were making moves in the turn three, turn turn two, two turn three, left hander. Um, that was another spot. That's where Max eventually got him. Was between turn three and turn four. And Mick really put up a fight. Mick was competitive in that race as well as he could be in a Haas. And as a result, he got 12th place. Uh, I also want to mention how um, Haas got 13th and 14th place finishes in Baku, finishing ahead of Lewis and Max. And that was because of the fact that um, Verstappen had a blowout with his tire. So he didn't, uh, he got 18th, but he did not, he did not finish the Grand Prix. 
uh, but he did complete more than 90% of it. He had a t- Max had the tire blowout. Lewis got 15th. So, you know, the Haases did finish ahead of Lewis Hamilton and Max Verstappen for what it's worth, even though Verstappen probably should have won that race. Um, and when did Mazepin spin uh, dot com? One of my favorite things for Haas. Uh, it, it was incurring so much that I think the person running the site had to give it up or they probably just had other things going on in their life that they couldn't keep up with it. But that was cool. That was one of my highlights for Haas this, this year. Um, another, another moment you could mention was Schumacher getting 14th in the final race in Abu Dhabi. But that's also because uh, George Russell retired, KB Raikkonen retired, Nicholas Latifi retired, Antonio Giovinazzi retired. So he kind of got an advantage um, with all four of those drivers. Um, with, well, retiring from the race. And Mazepin had to withdraw because of COVID. Um, worst moment from 2021. Signing Nikita Mazepin uh, because Haas needed paid drivers. And Mazepin is not an F1 driver, but his dad has enough money to fund an F1 team. So that's why they signed him. And, you know, having to deal with uh, the controversies of, with Nikita Mazepin throughout the season, including uh, posting um, bad stuff to his Instagram story. Um, there's that controversy. Uh, there's the other one of recently when they were in, I believe it was Sao Paulo, and he got into a disagreement with a bouncer, was told to leave. That was caught on camera. Not, not, a, not a great, um, not a great um, person is Nikita Mazepin. Not a par- person of high character, I would say. And neither is his father. But they had money, so that's what Haas needed was some money. And the Mazepin family was able to provide it. Um, yeah, the Saudi Arabia, Arabian Grand Prix, not good for either driver. Uh, that was the only race of the year where both of them retired. So not good when that happens. Uh, it was actually kind of impressive in a way seeing how, you know, you had some races where one driver retired, uh, but both of them, they have both of them retired was only one out of 23 races this year. Pretty good. Turkey and France, um, not great moments either for Haas. They uh, finished 19th and 20th, uh, respectively, in each race, which, what are you going to do? You're Haas. You're expected to finish last. You just did what everybody was expecting of you. And remember in Monaco earlier in the year when, I think it was either Nikita or Mick, one or the other. I think it was Nikita who was complaining uh, about Mick being slow and or maybe Mick complaining about Nikita because Nikita finished 17th at Monaco, Mick finished 18th. Uh, one of them was complaining about the other being too slow and how they should be able to pass him. But again, this is Monaco. There's not a lot of easy places to pass people at Monaco. Um, but it kind of showed you the, a little bit of um, disengagement between uh, the two drivers this season with Haas. So overall, not a great year 2021. No one, is, no one was expecting it to be a great year. We all thought that it would be a rough year um, for Haas, considering they had two drivers who have never raced an F1 before. Uh, their car was the worst by a country mile, almost literally by a country mile uh, in F1 this past season. And, you know, there's a, this is a team that's been struggling financially since the start of COVID. And, you know, they're hoping to make it by for the next few years, I would think. And maybe we'll see where Gene Haas goes from here. But uh, I rated their season out of five stars. I gave it a one star. And even that was generous. It was mostly a one star because of Mick and like the couple races that Mick did well in. That's about it. I mean, the highest, you know, Mazepin got 14 in, uh, in Baku. Um, and that was his highest finish of the year was 14th. No, yeah, not, not great. Um, storylines for Haas heading into the 2022 season. Uh, what is the car going to look like in 2022? Not just the livery, which the livery was not great because it was a purely Russian livery on the car. And yeah, you, you can understand if you know with Haas, why they did that it's for Mazepin. So that's why I feel some sympathy, sympathy for Mick Schumacher having to race a car with a Russian livery 
when he has no business driving a car with a Russian livery. And this is even a sport, like Russian with all their anti-doping -dope stuff that's been transpiring over these last few years. And we couldn't actually, you know, race, Mazepin couldn't actually race with a Russian flag because they're banned from international competition. And yeah. Um, so not just livery with this car, not was it not just livery in terms of looks, but performance. What does it look like on the track? Um, is it more competitive? Is it faster? Um, like, is this now, you know, is this now a car where Haas can go from Q, Q1 into Q2? I don't think anybody's expecting them to go to Q3, but can they get to Q2 on a more consistent basis? That That's the question here. And if the car isn't better next season, if this is the same, if we see a similar performance next season with Haas than we compared to this year, with all these new changes and the energy focused on the said car for next year, what happens next for Haas? Are, are, are we, they're not, you're not firing Mick Schumacher. Mick Schumacher can do whatever he wants. He's a Schumacher. He's probably going to go either to, um, Alfa Romeo or Ferrari. Um, Nikita Mazepin, they'll probably tell him to screw off, to, you know, F off. Um, but in terms of the actual team, like this Gunther Steiner go next season, if the car is not good enough, um, is, is there going to be some new financial backing? Who knows? Uh, speaking of Gunther Steiner, will 2022 be his last season with Hawks? That's a storyline I have as well next season. Um, he's been under a lot of stress, I, I would imagine, stress and anxiety since COVID, uh, having to deal with a pandemic, having to deal with a, you know, leading a Formula One team, a team that has not been very competitive, a team that has not been very interesting on the track. And he's having to deal with a lot of off-track stuff more than on-track stuff, which is less than ideal. Um, you know, and, and this is the same guy who, you know, had to deal with the Roman Grosjean crash at the end of 2020 uh, in Bahrain. Like that, that was a serious incident. Um, you know, just a lot of stress and work for not a lot of results. Um, between Grosjean last season, COVID, into this season with Mazepin, his father, the team car, no points. All of that has to be waning on the mind of Gunther Steiner. So if 2022 doesn't go well, kind of like I mentioned with the car, uh, if Haas doesn't have a better performance, if they are making Q2s, if they don't get any points next season, then what? Where do we go from here? Um, and for Steiner, will he be done with Haas? Uh, I think there is enough interest for him to get another job in Formula One. I don't know if he'll be a team manageable a team manager or a principal director, but I think he does have some influence and quite a bit of knowledge that he can get another job in Formula One should he decide to take another job in Formula One and not be with Haas. He's been with Haas since they've started Formula One. Like I, I'm sure he feels a, a lot of sentiment and a lot of gratitude towards Gene Haas and the team. But if he decides that he doesn't want to be a part of this, or if Haas decides he doesn't want Steiner there, then then what? Then what happens? So that's something I think to keep in mind in this offseason, heading into next season. And finally, when does Mick Schumacher move on? Uh, we know that the deal with Mazepin, it was, you know, he's there as long as his dad's there. But for Mick, um, he's someone who I think has a higher, a much higher, higher ceiling than Mazepin. Mick Schumacher will be an F1 champion. Like I, I guarantee it. I have no doubt that he will be an F1 champion at some point, probably with Ferrari. That's my guess. And Mick deserves better than what happened with Haas this year. Mick, 100%. That was an unfair situation for him to be in this past season with his dad and Mazepin having a lot more leverage and a lot more power compared to what Mick says or Mick does. Um, it, 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 I thought it was completely unfair. Mick is a better driver. Mick is a better person. Mick is someone you want on your team compared to Nikita Mazepin. So not to say that Mick's playing second fiddle, because I don't think he was, but I do think there is better opportunities for him than to be with Haas. Um, 
down down the road. Now he is signed with Haas next season, so he will be with them for at least next year. I don't think it'll be for longer than that. Um, it, it's really tough because I don't think Ferrari want to lose him. I, I would be shocked if they decide to let him go for nothing. Um, I mean, they they had a, a really good thing this year with Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz. I, I thought those drivers were uh, were really fun to watch, were really exciting. Um, Sainz finished four, or Sainz finished fifth in the Drivers Championship. Leclerc finished seventh. Um, and then Alfa Romeo, yeah, Valtteri Bottas racing for Alfa Romeo for another couple of years. Uh, Gongwei Zhou is going to be their second driver. He's an, a young kid. Uh, they get the China, Chinese market in, for both Al, Alfa Romeo and F1. There's a tapping into that. Does Nick interfere there with Alfa Romeo? Who knows? Um yeah, I, I maybe, you know, there maybe there's a Ferrari swap somewhere down the line with signs. Leclerc has the longest contract, I believe, in Formula One. It ends in 2024. I, yeah, I, I just don't know. Mick, this should be his last year with Haas. The question is just where does he go? Is it Ferrari for 2023? Is it Alfa Romeo? Yeah. I, I, I really is it, it I really don't know how uh, Mick I don't know how Mick goes about his Formula One career after next year with Haas. I'm sure there'll be a bunch of teams who will be lining up to get him and a lot of teams who will be inquiring about him, but I don't know how he goes about that. Uh, so that's the 2021 F1 season in review for Haas. Uh, we're gonna be back uh, Tuesday with a video on Alfa Romeo. And maybe Williams? We'll see. At least Alfa Romeo. There's at least one more video coming out tomorrow on Tuesday. Uh, thank you very much for watching. It's greatly appreciated. Uh, be sure to like this video, uh, subscribe to the channel, and we'll be back again on Tuesday. Peace out.